Hello friends, it's Brenda Bertrand and I'm back with another video. Thank you, first of all, for all of the feedback you provided. I found two top contenders for topics that you want me to do videos on and it was so helpful. And the first was discernment. Several people asked to do videos about discernment and I'm excited about that because I'm actually designing a class on discernment. And so this will be a good place to practice. And then if you feel called to it, you can join the course later on. And then secondly, you wanted, and I think this is really time sensitive and important, you wanted videos on dealing with COVID-19 from a spiritual perspective, kind of how I started this whole series is how can I, you, how can we continue to have spiritual fervor and spiritual nourishment in the midst of such a different and turbulent time? And we don't know how long this is going to last and how it's going to affect our lives on the other side of this. Um, but we do know um, that God is our present help in the midst of this and there needs to be our our own connection and reminder that God is present in this because sometimes it may feel that this is happening to us and that God is, is distant. So I wanted to just talk today quickly about um, speaking scripture over your life. And now some people take scripture and they just like sling it around and use it at the, you know, in different conversations, usually wielding it against others and using scripture to condemn others. But there are beautiful ways in which we can use scripture to nourish our own soul. And the way I like to do this is to personalize scripture. And the way we choose the scripture is by looking into our hearts and asking ourselves, where would I love the Lord Jesus Christ himself to show up more and be more present in this area of my life? And so you may say, I have an anxious heart. For those of you who are still going into the office, you may be afraid or anxious about contracting COVID-19. Or those who are parents may be stressed about whether they're destroying their children's education because they've never had to homeschool before. Or marriages may be strained because people haven't spent time or um, in the same space for so long. And so there's a lot of conflict. Um, it could be that you're single and you're living alone. And while you may like your alone time, this has gone too long for, um, for, for too long. And so you find the area and then you ask yourself, where do I want the hope of God to enter into my life, right? And that's how you determine the scriptures, the scriptures that glimmer with hope, the scriptures that shine with hope in that area, right? So if you're afraid, you may get a scripture like 1 Corinthians 7, 12, 32, that talks about, I want you to be free from anxieties. And so you can just speak over your life, God, I know that you want me to be free of anxieties. You want me to be free of fear. And so I receive the very thing that, that you're eager, you're eager, you want me to be free. Um, if you're going into spaces and, and you are afraid, Isaiah 35, 4 says, um, say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not, behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God, God will save you, right? And so that sounds really new, um, Old Testament, very like King James. And so you personalize it and just say, when I have an anxious heart, I will remember not to fear because God will come and God will repay and God will cover me. God will save me. God, I need you to save me. And so you start to make it a breath prayer. And that's where we get into praying without ceasing. People are always asking, how do you pray without ceasing? And it's that ongoing conversation with God that you ha you're having in your head, right? We, we usually have a conversation going on in our head. And I'll do a video on that because I think I need to do a video on the inner critic. But it's not necessarily a life-giving conversation. We're often having a conversation with ourselves um, about our inadequacies and our insecurities, right? And our inner critic is just beating us up in our heads. But there's another conversation, that is meditation. But there's another way we can meditate, which is to speak the truth of who we are over ourselves, over our lives. And so take a scripture, applying it to the area of your life where you want to sense, feel, experience more hope. And as you start to speak that scripture, the scripture of God, the words of God, they are alive. They're brimming with life and they're bring, brimming with hope. And as you um, start to really meditate them, like chew on it, have it going around in your head, in your heart, um, it'll start to produce fruit. It will start to produce fruit. 
And you may not see the circumstances change, but there'll be something about the way you show up and something about the way in which you feel the sense of confidence. You will be undergirded by something, someone that is greater than your circumstances. All right. So identify the area where you need more hope or that you want support, that you need the presence of God. Find one scripture that speaks um, glimmers of hope to that area and then just start customizing it and mulling it over in your heart. It will change your life. It will change your life. And as with everything in the spiritual life, it takes time to trust that God is eager to meet us at the points of our needs. So I want to encourage you to just be faithful to a simple practice. Um, it's not based on how you feel, right? Sometimes we just don't feel like doing this stuff, um, but it does yield fruit because the word of God is alive and it's active. So God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.